Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over a tour of my pantry and all of our dry goods and canned goods that we purchase, how we purchase them, why we purchase them, and how we store them. But before I do, I just wanted to let you guys know it is already February. I cannot believe that January is already passed. We're into February. We have had a jam-packed January. I don't know about you but February is gonna be even more jam-packed. We got our feet wet with a lot of editing. We put some videos out there for you guys. We're trying to improve each and every video as we go along. And this month we intend to get into the gym, do more cooking videos for you, some more motivation. So stick around for those coming up. But before I get any further into this, let me know if you guys are excited about February and what's in store and how far along you are in your goals what you're looking forward to for the rest of the year, let me know in the comments. And without further ado, let's get started on what I've got going on in here. So I've been doing some serious organizing this weekend. I can't even tell you how much I have been organizing. And if you look closely, you're gonna see that I've been putting labels on each of my lovely glass containers that hold all of our dry goods. And the reason for this is I finally decided to just step it up a bit, do this so that when I do the video, it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. I also put some contact paper down. Now, many people would probably go, oh, contact paper, ew, because it sticks so much, it's hard to take off and get rid of when you wanna replace it or you've gotta go over it. Well, I've got a hack at the end of this video, if you guys wanna check it out, um, on how I put this in so that it's easily removed and replaced when you wanna change out your color or you want just a different theme, it's pretty cool. So stay tuned to the end to check that out. And without further ado, let me get started on some of the things that we you see here and where we buy them and how we buy them, why we buy them. Uh, with um, our diet, we stay about 80 to 90% plant-based. So we've got a lot of organic whole food grains. Um, we've got some seeds, which is considered a grain sort of too, this quinoa. Uh, we've got nutritional yeast, we've got beans, we have apple cider vinegar, bone broth, um, that is one of our not plant-based items, um, and some grains. But let's get started with the stuff we have up top here just to kind of get that out of the way. This is um, just all of our flours we keep around. I use oat flour in a lot of different recipes when I bake. Um, and I've got some chickpea flour. I plan to do a video on some recipes, some fun uh, dessert type recipes. If you guys are looking forward to that, let me know in the comments. I've got organic all-purpose flour and some organic whole grain flour. Those are left over from Christmas when I did some baking. And I've got organic sugar that I usually use to make kombucha. I have not been making kombucha lately, actually. I need some new SCOBY, so if you know of anybody who has a SCOBY or where I can get a good one, give me a comment below. Uh, I've got some monk fruit sugar, which is actually monk fruit sweetener. It is not a sugar. It does not have, um, anyway, it does not have calories and it does not have carbohydrates. We have some brown sugar. Um, and then coming down to the next one, this is where the goods begin because we use a lot of quinoa in recipes. Quinoa is a organic quinoa is what you want to buy. I buy this at Sprouts in bulk and it is fantastic. It's got all the amino acids that you need, building blocks of protein. So it's basically a complete protein in a grain or in a seed. Add some veggies to it on the side of a salad, as a side dish, in soups, in salads. Um, in all kinds of dishes. It's so versatile. I'll be doing some uh, videos on these. And then we have nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is kind of smells like it's flaky, kind of like it's flaky, kind of like uh, cheese. It smells kind of like cheese and people use it as a cheese substitute. So you can put it on top of popcorn. You can put it in soups like minestrone. You can put it on top of potatoes or bake potato fries and put this on top of them or coat them in it. It's an awesome substitute for cheese and it gives you awesome B vitamins. So it's it's just a fantastic thing to have around. I'll be doing some, again, some recipes with this included so you can see how to use it more. And I've got beans, dry beans. We use these in soups all the time. They're Beans are fantastic for your body. They are full of carbohydrates, fiber, and protein. They are something you could pretty much live off of and I have pretty much lived off of for most of my life. We also have them down here. I just went shopping, so I wanted to show you guys this while I went shopping. I bought these um, 
bigger packages of organic beans because we like to have beans around to just throw in recipes as we need them or on a salad or as a side dish. And you know you're getting some great carbs with fiber, with protein. They help boost your progesterone. Uh, beans are just amazing. And I do go with organic. We buy them organic for in the um, bulk bins at, at Sprouts again. So I put them in here. And the reason I use glass, let's get to that. So if you don't know already, the reason I use glass, um, if I've not told you already, is because plastic has chemicals. We have plastic all over all of our foods half the time and we are it's either packaged in plastic, we have plastic wrappers, we are inundated with plastic in the world. So if I can buy something in bulk and I can put it right away in glass to protect it away from those chemicals while it sits on my shelf waiting to be used, then that's what I do because anytime you can get away from plastic, we have converted pretty much our whole kitchen, the majority of the stuff we put our food in and use to glass instead of plastic. These are the little things we use to buy our dry goods like beans and grains. And then these are the bags we use to get um, our produce most of the time. But I reuse those as much as I can. Uh, we've got some legumes, which are awesome, protein as well, and fiber. Again, your theme that you're gonna see in most of the stuff that we buy is it's high in fiber. And the point of fiber is to lower blood sugars, is to help your blood sugar stay level. So when you eat something with a decent amount of carbs and you take away the fiber, you've got your net carbs and that's really what you wanna be going off of. I teach all of my clients to get a good amount of fiber. Long grain brown rice has fiber. We've got wild rice that's with um, brown rice in it. We've got a organic short grain uh, just for a change up. And this has a decent amount of fiber. I buy it at Costco in bulk. I gave some of it away to a couple different people because it's such a big bag and it's such a great deal. I've got some long grain white rice that my son likes and just for a recipe and to change it up. We don't eat a lot of white rice and we don't eat brown rice every day of our life, even though I've got quite a bit of it here. We've got organic popcorn because we love to snack on popcorn. Popcorn is awesome for you. It's, it's got carbohydrates. It's got tons of fiber though. So it's great to fuel you up. It's great fiber, but you want it organic because there's so much corn out there that is now unfortunately genetically modified. And what's great about this is you can cook it in uh, a little bit of high flash point coconut oil. It's so like a non-refined coconut oil and it cooks up great. You only have to use a tiny bit of oil and you can make a huge batch. And there you go. You put a little bit of sea salt on it or a little bit of pink salt. You've got yourself a really good little treat instead of chips if you're craving a, a little crunch and some salty. We've got organic oats. Or oats are one of the highest pesticide herbicide sprayed items there are. So organic is the way you want to go. This is a local honey that we buy of this lady. She is here in the Phoenix area. She's got quite a few locations and she is an amazing beekeeper of like 19 years. So She's someone I trust. I've talked to her extensively about local honey and how well it helps with your allergies. If you get it in season and you use it while things are blooming, this is the actual desert bloom honey. So it, it actually is from the bees that are pollinating all the desert bloom so that the stuff that is causing the allergies, we just have like a teaspoon to a tablespoon a day. It kicks the allergies. It's awesome. It's antimicrobial, antibacterial, helps with the gut health. And going, speaking of gut health, we have bone broth. Another thing that's amazing for gut health, it has has um, all kinds of amazing benefits with the collagen in it to heal the gut and to give you collagen that helps with your skin, it helps with your immune system. It has nine grams of protein in one cup and it's low in sodium. So if you look at the sodium, it's only like 95 milligrams per, per cup, which is really low for a broth. Most broths are higher than that. You can get some low sodium broths that are like that, but, and then we have a few processed things. Again, we stick with mostly 80 to 85% whole foods in our diet. So that means we stay away from the processed foods as much as possible. We kind of do, I would say about 15 to 20% somewhat processed foods and we try to stay in a healthier range on those processed foods. So meaning something like the Kashi bars that I have here that are supposed to be non-GMO. These don't necessarily say they're organic, but I do try to buy organic whatever possible, but I buy what's on sale. You have to be realistic and we will have some things for take on the go. We've got some chickpeas here. Um, those are not necessarily processed, but I'd say maybe a little bit. Some sunflower seeds for, for some crunching and munching, but you have to be realistic, I realize. This has been a transition to transition us from, oh, and these little things are 
These little things are obviously for my bags and keep everything. So I keep a little box here and I keep a, a little notepad here just so if I'm in here and I think of something I need to buy, um, I can just stick it on there so I have it ready to go. Um, and then, um, so yeah, so we, getting back to the processed food stuff, we stay away from most processed things. We don't eat a lot of processed meats. Uh, we don't eat a ton of meat in general, but the little bit that we do, we try to go with organic whenever possible. I realize, I realize though that organic isn't always possible when it comes to meats. Uh, there are, however, more and more organic meats and organic items coming out on the market. Most of the stuff we find is at Costco. They're awesome uh, for buying in bulk and just having it. And it'll last you for a long period of time or you can split it with someone. Um, and then, you know, they're, they're getting more and more bulk bin items at Sprouts, like the beans now. Most of them are organic and used to they weren't. So I'm really excited about that and wanted to share that with you. And then my canned beans. And then over here we've got, we use a lot of um, diced tomatoes or that I turn into tomato, to tomato sauce or use to make a homemade uh, pasta sauce. Sometimes we buy, if I find something on sale, of course I'll buy it. Usually I'll try to buy the organic. Uh, but we keep a lot of this around because we throw these things in recipes all the time. So I buy a case at Costco and they last us for a little while. I keep more of an organic chili bean rather than ranch style beans around. These are great for topping maybe a chili cheese potato, baked potato if you want to, and it's a little bit healthier side than just the ranch style beans. We do have some pastas down here. Um, we've got ones that are like made from the chickpeas that I've been trying out. They're still high in uh, carbohydrates if you look, but we have a good amount of fiber. We've got eight grams of total fiber between soluble and insoluble. So if you take that away, you're, you're looking at only 20 something per two ounces, which is about four ounces cooked. Um, and then you've got yourself some, if I do buy regular spaghetti, I try to buy the kind with extra fiber because again, fiber helps to control your blood sugars. So if you decide to have yourself some actual pasta, the best way to do that is to keep your portion in check, but also get the high fiber. This is a new one I'm trying out. Um, it's the same thing, high in fiber. Actually, this I think is eight grams. Yeah, eight grams of fiber. Um, and you've got yourself um, still some carbs, but the fiber helps to offset that. So I plan to make a pasta salad, trying that out and with more veggies. So again, the veggies will add fiber. Uh, if you're coming up the list here, we always do organic and we always do, um, natural peanut butters. Natural peanut butters only have added salt. They do not have added sugars. And if you look, it's peanut roasted peanuts, organic peanuts and sea salt. You're not dealing with added sugars, okay? So, and you're dealing with some carbohydrates, but you're dealing with a good amount of fiber and you mix that up and it's really good healthy fats for you. Obviously keep your portion in check. Um, I've got extra sea salt. We keep some in the kitchen. I've got extra pink salt. These are higher in your minerals. So if you're gonna use salt, you wanna use salt that are healthier for you that pr provide some trace minerals. And so I keep those around. We've got some extra sunflower seeds, our extra flax and chia seed, and then the rest of my moringa. And these are for my blending station. We just keep extra. And if you see, I've got an array of glass containers. These glass containers I've just saved over the years. People have given me, or I've gotten some, or I've saved some from things that I've bought so that I can store, like I can make a, um, kind of dressing with this. This was a maple syrup, a natural maple syrup. Just if I come across something I can use them for. And then I keep these bottles for cleaning agents so you can use uh, natural cleaners like the ones I use from Young Living, household cleaner. And you can put a spray bottle top on that and use that around the house. So a lot of these containers I've just had over the years I've collected or I've bought um, like these wide mouth mason jars to put some of these things in. And then I bought the labels at um, again at Michael's the craft store. So I had fun putting the labels on there because I was organizing anyway and I had so much to do in here and clean out. It was just kind of had gotten cluttered um, and I already had things in glass jars but I just wanted to get more of a feel of the things that I have and there's a bunch of other things I typically buy. These are some of the staples so that's why I decided to go ahead and put the labels on them and then down here we have some um, high in fiber again, high in B vitamins, uh, yams, awesome baked, awesome turned into baked fries, so many different options. I'm gonna do some videos on these cooked in the air fryer soon. 
I let me know in the comments if you want to see that. I've got some regular potatoes because regular potatoes are amazing for you. They have high, high potassium, awesome fiber and minerals on the skin. And then of course onions because those are such great antioxidants, amazing for your body and help uh, to lower your free radicals. Uh, we have, like I said, we like to munch on popcorn. So that's one of our things we have in here. That's that natural um, organic popcorn made with, uh, again, coconut oil. So we have a little bit of that on the weekends, but only during the weekends, just when we have our, instead of having any kind of uh, chips most of the time or anything like that, as, as you see in here, we don't keep a lot of that. And what I saved for the last was I wanted to bring to your attention, you've maybe heard of it before, or maybe you use it. If you're one of my clients, you for sure do. <laughs> I can't say enough good things about apple cider vinegar, raw, unfiltered, organic. Apple cider vinegar with the mother. The mother means the stuff on the bottom there, that sediment. Okay, so that is where your probiotics and enzymes are. And then this has a decent amount of potassium per tablespoon is 15 milligrams. And it gives you a way of helping to regulate blood sugars. So another thing, just like the fiber, I'm always working on keeping blood sugars in check, especially if you're gonna eat carbs in your diet and you're not doing um, a bunch of sugars in your diet. There's a way of helping with controlling blood sugars and that is this apple cider vinegar. If you wanna see a video of how I use this on a daily basis and how I make my drink out of it, uh, that I drink a few times a day, uh, let me know in the comments. I would love to do that video. I think I'm gonna end up doing that and I'll give some more benefits on that video of apple cider vinegar and uses for it. So there you have it, a tour of my pantry. I hope you learned something new today, something you can take with you to get healthy over this next year and keep leveling up over the years to come because true health really does begin with your nutrition and what you're putting in your body. What you put in your body on a daily basis, on a regular basis, on a consistent basis, really does impact everything in your life. So I hope that you'll join me again. I hope this content was inspiring for you. Give me a thumbs up if so. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe, hit the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload new content. And share this with somebody that you love and you want to see get healthy. All right, until next time, I'm Penny the Accountability Queen, helping you remain accountable to your goals. All right, blessings. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so I don't want to tack down the entire paper because it's so hard to get back up. And when I want to replace it, the reason I'm using this in the first place, I'll replace it often because it'll get messed up. And so I'm only going to tack down the front and the corners. So I'm just going to score it right where I made my line. I'm going to lightly score it along this line here. I don't want to cut through too much, so I'm just going to go straight along, lightly scoring. If I cut through a little, it'll survive. And then take this one totally off. And then we can get you want to start it, and, but not take it off just yet. And then what I'm going to do is cut a corner off. I'm going to score a decent size so that we can get enough of it to stick to tack it down on the back end. But not too much. Okay. Now that we have it in here, we're going to turn it over where we turn it. And, and then we're going to take off, get ready to take off these edges that we have that I'm ready to take off. Make 
make sure that we got it where we want it and that it's fitting. Okay, so I'm gonna take those off first now that I kind of have it where I want it. Okay, so as long as you don't press it down too much initially, you just tap the edges and then you work it once you know you've got it where you want it. So then you can, you can even take a credit card or something of the sort and kind of really get it pushed on there. You want enough of a corner cut out so that it'll hold it down. And then you've got your edges you want to check here. And I would say start, try to start kind of in the middle, pulling that away. And you can go ahead and take off. Well, you're gonna start in the middle tacking it down once you get the all the stuff off that you scored. You're gonna start in the middle and work your way out. And just go under, work your way over, making sure to pull everything tight. And there you go. got that in place so you can put your stuff on it. So now that you have your contact paper down and you've only tacked your corners and your front edge, it'll stay in place and when it gets scuffed up, you can easily remove it instead of having it stick to the bottom. You can change out your color if you feel like changing the color. By, by the way, I'll be painting the back of this soon um, and brightening it up because it's just needing a repaint. And uh, this was only at the 99 cent store, for, so it's super cheap. They have a bunch of different colors. You can get it pretty much anywhere now. And it's an easy way to be able to replace or change out if you want to make it look different in your cabinets or your pantry. Um, and then you can pull it off easier without it being stuck and pulling it off and having all kinds of extra pieces still left uh, behind when you go to replace it or change it out. Uh, 99 cent store, super cheap. You get a yard and a half by 18 inches, so it goes pretty far. Uh, I got one roll for each shelf in here just to make sure I had plenty, and if I wanted to use it somewhere else, like my drawers in my kitchen, I could. So, there you go.